As we've seen before in the patient data communication videos, the main configuration file of a Tomcat server is the server.xml file. If we start the Tomcat server, for instance from XAMP, we see that Tomcat listens by default on two different ports. And the server.xml file can find the role of those ports. The first one, 8005, is set at the level of the server element. It corresponds to the shutdown port. The server will listen to this port and, if the string shutdown is sent to it, all web applications will be closed and Tomcat will stop running. We can test that by using the telnet command to directly connect to the 8005 port on the local host. We write the shutdown command and press enter. You can see that the server immediately stops. Port 8080 is set at the connector level. The connector sets up Tomcat so that HTTP requests sent to port 8080 are forwarded to the engine, which will process them. From there, depending on the URL, the engine will in turn pass those requests onto the corresponding web applications. If we access the local host on port 8080, we get the default Tomcat web page. We can also access our web applications, such as the Fire Server. The standard port used by all browsers for HTTP communications is port 80. If you want to avoid adding the 8080 port to each URL in our system, you can change the ports in the configuration file to 80. Once we have restarted our server, we can access all our applications without specifying the port. If you try to access the application from port 8080, it will no longer work. To add HTTPS to the server, we will need to add a new connector. The standard HTTPS port is 443. However, just as we sometimes use 8080 for Tomcat instead of 80, we sometimes use 8443 for HTTPS in Tomcat. The reason for that is that ports 8080 and 443 are generally reserved by the Apache web server, which could be running at the same time as we see here. In this new connector, we want to use the HTTP protocol with TLS enabled. We set the client authentication to optional, meaning that we will not ask for client certificates. Finally, we have to provide the key store file that we generated previously. We also have to provide a passphrase for this key store. The key store passphrase is here put in plain text, but it's not such a huge security risk as normally the server.xml file should stay on the server and not be accessible from outside the server's computer. If a hacker gains access to this file, he probably doesn't need access to the key store to do anything he wants to the server. Once we've restarted the server with this new configuration, we see that it's now listening to three ports. The shutdown port 8005, the HTTP port 8080, and the HTTPS port 8443. We can now access the Tomcat server either with the HTTP localhost 8080 or with HTTPS on port 8443. If we use HTTPS, we see that Chrome adds a lock icon next to the URL. This shows the user that the communications are secured. You can click on the lock to see the certificate, or we can find all the information that we put in the previous lab. We can do the same for any secured website. If, for instance, we go to the website of the University of Brussels, you can see that they have a valid certificate. In the details, you can see, for instance, all the subdomains where the certificate is valid. We can also see that the certificate was delivered by a company called Terena SSL, based in Amsterdam. If we look at the full certificate se chain, we can see that their certificate is in turn validated by the DigiCert Root Certificate Authority. We will 
now add some specific security constraints for our Fire Server. In the Fire Server project, we have a web.xml file where we can configure rules that will only apply to this particular web application. First, as the Fire Server will be communicating sensitive patient information, we want to make sure that it's only accessible through secure channels. We will therefore add a security constraint constraints, such, as the, such that the entire application requires a confidential transport, transport layer, such as TLS. If we activate this configuration and try to access the application through simple HTTP, we see that you are, we are immediately redirected to the HTTPS port 8443. Finally, we would like to more specifically protect the small user interface that we did to access the Fire Server. We'll add a very basic, and not secure at all, layer of authentication. To do that, we'll use the Tomcat users.xml file, which defines a user database for the Tomcat server. We previously used it to create our admin credentials to access the manager application of Tomcat. Now, we added a new role which we called Fire User. We also added a new user with the username Adrien, which, we, which will have the role of Fire User. After restarting the server, we now have to configure the web.xml file. We add a new security constraint, specifically on the URL pattern fire.html, to only protect that page. We set an authentication constraint so that only a user with the role fire user can access the server. If we just put that and deploy our application, we see that we have no problem accessing the index page of the server. But if we try to go to the fire.html page, we get an HTTP unauthorized access error. What we still need to be able to authenticate ourselves is a login page. We add to the web.xml file a login config element to use the basic authentication method, which will use a simple browser pop-up to ask for the user credentials. If we redeploy our application and try to go to the fire.html page, we now have a login prompt. If we put in our very secure credentials, we can now access the page. 